this is the Provoke Prawn, here with a tips and tricks video on how to improve the performance of your gaming PC and get extra performance out of it in a number of different ways. And you might well be running a machine that you've been using for a few years now and you're looking to get better performance out of it, but you've seen just how difficult it is to get a graphics card at the moment, just how extortionate the pricing is, or how difficult they are to get hold of, and you're frustrated because you want to get a better performance. Well, here I am to talk to you about the various different settings and tweaks both you can do in terms of software and hardware to get better performance out of your machine as it sits now. If, like many people, you've been using your PC for a few years, you might find some of these tips useful. These are things that I've done to my machines over the last few years that have improved the performance and just generally overhauled things. And some of them are really easy and some of them are a little bit harder. So stick with me through the end as I go through a number of different tips to help improve the overall performance of your machine. The first thing I would actually recommend doing, and this is a big one, but an easy one to do, is to do a fresh install of Windows. What you'll find is over time, you've been running your PC for a while, you've no doubt installed a number of different apps on it, software, games, you've probably downloaded loads of different files, you've installed various things, you've uninstalled things, you've done loads of sorts of things like that over the time, Windows updates, all sorts of things like that. Those sorts of things will be cluttering up your hard drive and slowing down your machine. Something as simple as reinstalling Windows can really make a difference. The process for it is also really straightforward. If you go to the Windows Start menu, by pressing the Start key on your keyboard and type Reset, you will find there are options for resetting your PC in there. You can go through those options and select to reset your machine and delete all your files. Obviously, it's worth going through and backing up anything that you want to keep before you do this process because you will lose it all. But doing this will give you a clean, fresh install of Windows that will get rid of everything that's messy and otherwise slowing down your machine that will have happened over time. This is an easier option to say formatting the drive completely and going through a hard reinstall of Windows but it does certainly make a difference and it makes life a lot cleaner because you're basically starting from scratch again. I want to re-emphasize for a second that you will need to back everything up that you want to keep and be careful with this option for selecting all drives and deleting everything. If you have more than one drive in your system, obviously you don't want to delete all data from everything. You want to delete the data from your main boot drive to get the best performance there. However, it might pay to clean up all of your drives while you're there and free up a lot more space. It really depends on what you want to hold on to. Don't blame me for accidentally deleting your data though. Please back up before you start this process. This is one simple way to do it. Once you've downloaded and installed Windows, obviously you then need to go through the process of going through the Windows updates and downloading and reinstalling everything that you need. Obviously take time to think about the programs that you use most often and the ones that actually matter. For example, my mainstays would be Steam, Epic Games, Discord, Origin maybe, Ubisoft Connect, things like that. Those are important ones to me, but minimize the things that you're installing that you don't need. And that can really help. There are other settings that you can go into as well, where you can open Task Manager by holding Control, Shift and Escape, and you can go to the startup settings in there, and you can turn on and off different programs that you want to use to ensure that the things that you don't use regularly aren't launching when Windows is launching, and that will ensure that Windows actually launches a bit faster. Another thing that you can do, which some will say don't do if you haven't got problems, but I've never had an issue with, is BIOS updates. Now your motherboard, like anything else, requires updates. BIOS updates are generally a little bit more tricky to do than say Windows updates, for example, or game updates. They require a little bit of extra work. Generally, it will vary from motherboard to motherboard, so it's important to go to your motherboard manufacturer's website and check how you download and install the BIOS for that. ASUS has a really simple one in Armory Crate with an easy update software, which allows you to download the latest BIOS and install it. Download it into Windows, then it will reboot your machine and it'll automatically go through the installation process. But for some other BIOS updates, you need to download it into a USB flash drive, boot into your BIOS, then go into the Easy Flash or BIOS Flash settings, put it into there, it'll restart again, it'll load the BIOS from that USB drive, then you have to wait a little while while it installs. And it can be a bit scary. It can also go horribly wrong if there are power fluctuations during that time. 
So if you're a little bit intimidated by this sort of thing, you can just skip this step. But BIOS updates are worth doing in my mind because they bring updates and enhancements to your motherboard that you might have missed out on. These can include everything from speed enhancements to network improvements and connectivity, various different things that the manufacturer have seen fit to improve over time. They can also give extra additional compatibility with other CPUs. And this is worth noting for a thing that I'm going to talk about a bit later on. Another thing to check while you're in the BIOS is to see if you have XMP settings enabled. This is relevant to Intel CPU setup. XMP ensures that your RAM is running at the correct speed. If you have XMP capable RAM, you will find that you will get a number of megahertz out of it. So for example, the RAM that I have in the machine that I'm using as my example, has 3200 megahertz RAM installed the standard. Now, if you don't turn on XMP, it won't actually run at those speeds. So it's very important to find and turn on that XMP setting. So if that's something you haven't already done, it's worth bearing in mind. You will also find that if you do a BIOS update, it might well turn that XMP setting off. So if you've done a BIOS update before, or if you're doing it now, you need to make sure you go in and change that XMP setting and make sure that's set. When you get into Windows, now you have a fresh install, or even if you're not doing that part of the tip, that I've given you, make sure that you have Windows game mode turned on. And if you can access it with the right hardware, hardware acceleration is another one to look at. I've done a video separately on how to get more FPS out of your graphics card and the best settings to use. And I'll link to that in the description. And there are various different things within Windows that you can tweak to improve the performance that you're getting out of your GPU and increase the frame rates, both in games and in Windows as well. So be sure to check out that video. The next thing I want to talk about is RAM. You may well find that you can improve the performance of your machine with the additional purchase of RAM. Now, if you're running a machine with DDR4 RAM in it, generally you'll probably have a dual channel memory set up and you'll most likely have two sticks of RAM in your machine as it stands. One thing you can do, obviously, to improve the performance of your machine is to add in some extra RAM. You can purchase two sticks of RAM and put in those extra sticks into your machine and then you have four sticks, four slots, and potentially doubling your RAM capacity. There are some important points of note though when installing RAM and making sure that you have the right compatible RAM. When you're purchasing RAM to go alongside the RAM that you already have in there, you need to make sure that it's the same size in terms of gigabytes, the same speed in terms of megahertz, and the same timings. And I'll show you a label that you'll see on the side of the RAM, you can see the specifications of it there. When you go to purchase, you need to make sure that it matches. So in this example, you'll see that I have two sticks of eight gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM. This is DDR4 RAM, and you'll note from the numbers underneath the main barcode here that it's 3200 megahertz, and the timings are 16, 19, 19, 36. So if I'm purchasing some extra RAM to fit in the system, I need to make sure those numbers match up. That is 2, 8 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz, 16, 19, 19, 36. The long number, the CRM16GX4M2D3200C16, you can use that to search for on Amazon or other websites to find the right RAM so it will match up in terms of all these specs. And then you can be sure when you purchase that you'll have RAM that matches the RAM that's already in your system and you'll increase the overall capacity while maintaining all those other settings and ensuring that it's compatible and that your system will run it well. Now, another thing to do with your machine to improve the performance is simple maintenance. You'll find that over time, if you're not looking after your machine very well, and even if you are, there will be a dust buildup inside the case. You'll find dust both on the fans, on the fan filters, and on the radiators in there. What you can do is you can simply purchase some compressed air you can get cans for compressed air you can go inside your machine and you can simply hold the fans and blow the compressed air out of it and that will blow the dust off you can wipe them down with alcohol wipes as well that's another one to do don't, obviously don't use any liquids inside your machine but you can basically wipe off as much of that dust as you can and blow out the excess doing this sort of things to radiators and fans will ensure a better airflow into the case and improve overall performance. This is well worth doing if you have an all-in-one radiator as well for an all-in-one cooler for your CPU cooler, for example. A really straightforward way of easily and cheaply improving the overall cooling performance. Make sure you blow all the different vents. You will find multiple vents. Usually you'll find that you'll have 
some air venting at the bottom with dust filters on it on the front perhaps on top on the back on the sides it's going to vary from case to case but there are a number of different points that are worth cleaning even if you need to remove the fans in order to do it, it's worth getting in there and giving them a good clean. The other thing that's worth doing is to change the thermal paste on your CPU. So if you have an all-in-one cooler or an air cooler of any sort installed, and it's been sitting there for a number of years, what you might find is that the thermal paste that you originally installed on there has degraded over time. It may well have become crusty or just not very good anymore. So what you can do is you can essentially just remove the pump head or the radiator from the CPU and it's usually just a case of unscrewing the four screws and gently removing that top plate. Once you've done that you'll find on the underside you'll see access to not only the CPU but obviously the cooler as well, the plate on that. You'll need to get some alcohol wipes, I'll link in the description to a Noctua kit that you can purchase. Essentially these are just wipes that you can use to wipe down both the CPU and the cooler. Then you, you can then reapply a thermal paste. So if you reapply a thermal paste of a good quality, I've got some here and again I'll link to that in the description. If you reapply that thermal paste, that should improve performance on its own. So you're reapplying it to the CPU, you reseat your pump or radiator on top of it and screw, re-screw the thumb screws down and then you've reseated that and you have a better experience with a better quality thermal paste and a renewed experience from there. You should see a good performance increase and a better cooling performance because of it. You have a better overall cooling performance because of the reapplied thermal paste and a better quality, hopefully, if you've paid for the extra good quality thermal paste from something like Noctua with an H2, for example. If you're using that, you can then get a better cooling on your CPU and then that will improve the overall frames that you're getting out of your machine. These are simple things to do that won't cost very much money, especially with reapplying thermal paste. Now, if you're really brave, you can also take your graphics card apart. If you've been using your graphics card uh, for a long time, the same logic applies here. There are various guides online on how to do this and it will vary from GPU to GPU, but essentially it's the same sort of process as it is for removing the thermal paste from your CPU. The process for taking your graphics card apart might be different from GPU to GPU. For example, on older cards, you might need to remove parts of the DisplayPort connection. With this 980 GTX that I'm using as an example, the removal process is fairly straightforward. It's worth noting that one of the screws has a sticker over it as an identifier to let the engineers at Zeus know if you've taken it apart and voided your warranty. So be warned before you do this that if your card is still in warranty, you may be voiding it by unscrewing rings and taking it apart. What we're looking to do is obviously replace the thermal paste on the underside. It's also worth noting that GPUs also have thermal pads on them usually. This one doesn't, but you might open it up and find there are several thermal pads over the parts of the GPU that will also need replacing. They'll have worn out over time and replacing and upgrading them may be beneficial. However, you do need to make sure they're the right size and thickness, and this can get trickier. You'll need to either measure the size of them or do some research as to what size your graphics card takes before you purchase and buy the replacements. Taking the graphics card apart might destroy them in the process, so it's worth bearing this in mind because you don't want to end up opening it up and then not being able to complete fixing it and sorting it out. Obviously, once you have the graphics card apart, you can disconnect the electronic parts that you can see here. I've taken most of it away from the main board, and then I can get in and clean the radiator a bit better. Theoretically, you could also remove the main fans from this section as well, and then you could wash the radiator out. That's a lot more in-depth clean, but you could obviously wash out a lot of dust if you had that potentially there as long as you don't let the water come in contact with the components and you draw off the radiator before you go about reinstalling it. Now much like with the CPU cooler I am looking to remove the thermal paste here and replace it. In this case I've got Thermal Gizli's Cryonaut which is well known and renowned for being superior excellent thermal paste for the use on GPUs or CPUs. There are other options obviously. Noctua has some very good thermal paste and Thermal Grizzly does a lot of different ones. The bonus of this kit is it also comes with some spreaders and you can use these on the CPU or GPU and essentially it's a flat head for the tool that allows you to disperse a thin layer of thermal paste over the surface and to set it up nicely. 
So the next thing to do is to remove the original aging thermal paste, which might well have dried on. Again, I'm using Noctua's alcohol wipes for this because they're designed to not give static contact and build up when you're using them. They're also excellent because of that alcohol in them it means that you can obviously wipe off old thermal paste, even if it's got a bit crusty. You can see the remnants of it here and I'm cleaning it up as much as I can to make it much easier and cleaner and ready for the application of the new thermal paste. So as I said, there's a tool that you can use for this and you could just apply a blob to the middle as I did with the CPU, but this tool allows you to cover the entirety of it. You can do this on GPUs or CPUs. As I said, we need to make sure we have a thin layer that covers the top. Don't apply too much. But also having not enough is a problem as well. This thermal paste ensures excellent contact between the processor and the heat sink to ensure the good dispersal of heat. And so upgrading it for better thermal paste like this Cryonaut and making sure that it is well applied and carefully applied so that there is good contact between the two and may well reduce the overall temps of your card. It will also help when you've cleaned up the fans and the radiator to allow for better airflow. Obviously, this is all done at your own risk. You need to make sure you have a steady hand. And as I said, if there are any thermal pads, look to replace them if they need to. But if you get too thick ones, you'll find that could cause problems as well. So that's well worth bearing in mind. One of the things that you can purchase actually in place of those thermal pads is some really interesting paste from a company that I'll link to in the description. Honest Tech Tips did a video on this recently where they basically showed how you can apply this paste quite easily and thickly in place of the thermal pads. It'll spread out a bit more efficiently and work similarly to the thermal paste that you saw me apply in there, where it basically ensures good contact between the graphics cards and the radiator to ensure maximum cooling. But it's easier and more convenient because you don't need to worry about the size of the thermal pads because this paste is taking the place instead. Once you've installed it all, cleaned it all up and put fresh thermal paste back on, now we just need to go about the process of reinstalling those screws and repeating whatever else you took off. The setup of this should be fairly straightforward for most graphics cards. You just need to be very careful when you're taking it apart. Obviously, make sure that you're grounded wherever possible and you're not building up any static electricity that could ruin the components. And also that you take it apart gently and put it back together gently without damaging anything. But this should help with performance and is worth considering doing. The next thing I recommend doing is a reasonable purchase for NVMe storage. Now, if you're still on a platter hard drive or even on a 2.5 inch SSD, you will find that an NVMe SSD is leaps and bounds ahead in terms of overall performance. You should find that even on older motherboards, and it's well worth checking out the specs for your PC if you're not quite sure, go to your manufacturer's website and find your motherboard and work out what the specifications for it are. But most modern motherboards from the last few years will have at least one M2 NVMe drive on them, a slot for a drive to go into. And if you use that drive and put a reasonably new PCIe Gen 3 drive in, assuming you have an older board, you will find that you can get 3,500 megabytes-ish read speeds. And you compare that with the speed of a platter hard drive, it is astronomically faster. So doing this is a great way to improve performance and to ensure faster load for times for Windows and for games as well. I have done a video separately on how to clone your drive from one drive to another. So if you have a hard drive with Windows on it and you want to just move Windows over to the new drive rather than trying to work out how to install Windows onto it, I have a video on how to do that. And the process is actually remarkably straightforward. And what then you can do is then either use the old drive, format it and just install other things on it, whether it's games or just keep it for your pictures and videos and whatever else you store and then have the NVMe drive as your boot drive for Windows and your main drive for your software and your main drive for your most important games that you want to load really quickly and you'll find there's a great big performance not only in how fast Windows loads but how fast your games load as well. NVMe drives aren't that expensive either now. You can get a terabyte drive for a reasonable amount of money you can go for a 500 gig one and save quite a bit more money, but you will find that 500 gigabyte drives fill up very quickly. So I'd recommend going for a minimum of one terabyte drive. 
and these things are ridiculously fast and a really fantastic upgrade if you're looking for a simple and reasonably affordable way to upgrade your machine. The next way to go with upgrading your machine is to look at improving your fans. If you've bought a case and you're running a case with the standard fans that came with it, you might find that the performance isn't as good as it could be. You could potentially upgrade to better performance fans. For example, Corsair's ML120 RGB Pro fans are well known for being excellent in terms of cooling performance. You can also look at something like Noctua's fans. Those again offer excellent airflow. Adding those into the case in place of your current standard fans is an excellent way to improve the cooling performance of your case. But what you might find is if you're in a position like I am and you have a case like the NZXT H510i, which isn't particularly good for airflow, then it might be better just to purchase a new case and move all the stuff that's inside your case into a new case that has better airflow. This might seem like a big mission, but for a minimal expense, you can actually get quite a bit of extra performance out of it. You'll see, for example, that I have the H510i here. What I'm going to do is go about the process of removing the motherboard, the graphics card, the hard drives, the all-in-one cooler from that case and installing them instead in the Lian Li Mini Snow Edition case that I purchased recently and did a build in. And I'm going to set it up in there with some other fans that has a lot more fan potential in it. You have fans that you can install on the bottom so we get a lot more cold air coming in from the underside, going straight into the graphics card. You have fans on the side and you're pulling cold air in that way. And we have fans on the top exhausting. There is a lot more fans compared to the two exhaust fans on the NZXT case and the two on the front and the radiator trying to pull cold air in. It's a really sort of warm environment in that case. And a newer case with better airflow might make a great bit of extra performance and better cooling with airflow that flows through and over all the devices inside and therefore cools things down nicely. This is well worth doing and I'm going to show you some of the steps for doing that now. Uh, also link to the video in the description where I did an installation in this case to give you an idea of what it's like. But what you'll find is the process is fairly straightforward. If you already built the machine in the past then you already know how to go about it. But essentially, we were just going to be removing the parts that are in there and transferring them to another case with some improved fans. These might seem like overkill maneuvers. You can just take some of the things that I've recommended. You don't necessarily need to do all of them. You might find, for example, a simple thing like reinstalling Windows can make a really big difference. Reapplying the thermal paste to your CPU will certainly help it run cooler. Now another thing that I mentioned earlier on is the potential, when you've updated your BIOS, you may find that you can upgrade your CPU. The platform that you're on will vary and it's worth bearing in mind what CPUs your motherboard can hold. Go to your motherboard manufacturer's website and work out which CPUs will work with your machine. You should find a list of compatible CPUs in there. So if we look at the example of my machine, for example, this is one that's been running for a while and it has a ROG Strix Z370E motherboard in it. That's an LGA 1151 socket, which means that it's compatible with both 8th and 9th gen CPUs. So for example, let's say I was running an Intel Core i3-8100 CPU. I could look to upgrade to something a lot more powerful like a Core i7-9700K or Core i9-9900K for example. These might be a significant upgrade but if you're already doing things like taking the CPU pump header off to clean the thermal paste out you might consider just upgrading your CPU. You'll find a good boost in performance overall there and you'll find the prices have come down in these CPUs a lot over the last few years as well. If you're not too sure what will work, if you go to PC Part Picker, which I'll link to in the description, you can put in the motherboard you have there and it will show you a list of compatible CPUs. Or well, I've done a video separately on how to upgrade your CPU if you're not too sure, but it's well worth upgrading your BIOS, checking the manufacturer's website to make sure that your new CPU idea is supported and checking PC Part Picker to make sure it's compatible. That will give you the option to swap out the CPU and upgrade performance in that way. 
And then obviously you'll need to reapply thermal paste to the CPU and to the cooler when you sell it back in the machine, but it shouldn't mean for a nice upgrade without having to splash out for a new graphics card. These are several of very different options for upgrading and improving your PC, some of which are remarkably easy and very simple to do, and others require a little bit of expense or a significant amount, depending on how enthusiastic you are with purchasing extra RAM, for example, or a new CPU. But they're all well worth doing, and great ways to improve and keep your machine running for a number of years yet, even when you can't get hold of an RTX 30 series card or beyond. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.